Hi, this is David from MLC CAD Systems, and I'm going to be showing you one of the new features in MasterCAM 2019, specifically the support of 3D tools in the lathe module. What I have on my screen here is just a, a fairly typical lathe part. I've already gone ahead and created a, a turn profile for my, my tool uh, chains and a uh, defined stock and a uh, chuck jaw. And there are a couple ways I can import and use 3D tooling. Uh, the easiest way would be just to use a tool library from a manufacturer that already has 3D tools in it. But what I want to show you is how to create a 3D tool uh, from scratch using just step models that you download from a tool manufacturer. So uh, to access the 3D module or the, the 3D tool dialog, I need to go to my lathe tool manager and I'm just going to right click in here and go ahead and choose the new option here to create a 3D tool. This is going to open up a dialog on the left side of the screen and I just need to work my way down the left side here. Uh, like a lot of things in MasterCam, it, it needs a name so we'll just call this one Rough and I can give it a tool number, and station number, home position, whether it's inch or metric, whether it's a right or left-handed turning tool. In this case it's just a right-handed tool. Next, the next button down is where I can go ahead and import or assign the uh, step model for the insert itself. So in this particular case, I've already downloaded the insert and holder from a manufacturer. So I'll just go ahead and use this button to go find that. And this is my insert here. I've got an English and a metric one. I'll just use the English. And basically, I'm just going to import that step file into MasterCAM. Now, uh, one thing you do want to do, and it's nice they've gone ahead and include, included this right here, is you can just do a one-click optimize on the solid model. And you can see it cleaned up a little bit. Probably some duplicate faces or something. Uh, it's a general turning tool. It will also be a thread, grooving. Uh, this one does have a corner radius, so I'll go ahead and pick a radius of an arc on there. There we go, 0.01315. And the next step down then would be to pull in the holder. So same basic dialog. I'll go ahead and use the uh, folder here to open up and find my holder. It's going to be this guy right here. And I'll go ahead and import him in. And what you'll see is that they are nowhere near aligned to each other, much less a, an actual plane. So for this guy, um, let's see, it does have uh, thickness and width requirements. Well, it's square, so I'll just go ahead and do a quick length of an entity, yeah, just to be certain. I'll do another one. Yeah, that looks all right. If it was a cylindrical, obviously, you'd throw in the diameter. Uh, the next option here, oh, well, before we forget, let's go ahead and optimize that guy as well. And wow, a lot, a lot done on that guy. All right, so the next option uh, is going to go ahead and align these to each other. And this is where it might be a little frustrating your first couple go-throughs. I'm still getting the hang of this, but we've got three options for aligning. A coincident, uh, which is just a face-to-face. -face. Um, perpendicular, which is a face and a, a line uh, with perpendicular edges. And parallel, which is a, a face on the insert and the holder and with a, a parallel edge. Um, and I've been I've been getting the most success with parallel. So alright, so I'll go ahead and select parallel. The insert's first up. And I just want to go ahead and pick a face on this guy. We'll just we'll pick that guy. And then I need an edge. I think I'll try for this. You want to make sure you're doing an edge and not a point. There we go. And then I need to pick the insert. And I think if I uh, pick this face, and then I'm looking for this edge. We'll see how close we get. Well, yeah, not too bad. So lined it up, lined it up pretty good. Like I said, it's parallel seems to be the simplest one to wrap your brain around. Uh, well, there we go. That's not too bad. And if if it wasn't right, I can always hit the uh, the edit. And that'll bring up my gnomon, and I can make you know any adjustments I need to there with the dynamic gnomon. But I think we got it, got it in one. 
All right. So next up is to go ahead and define what they call the cutting and the machine connection plane. Now the cutting plane is going to be, you know, your what basically what's what's parallel to top. So best bet here is the top of the holder. There we go. You can see it's aligned it to X, Y. And then the machine connection plane, you know, where the back of the holder is, basically this, this back face here. And if I right click and look in top, we can see that this guy is, has been aligned. Um, the next stop um, is the what they're calling the boundary. And this is, if you can see it, there are, you know, as you would used to uh, when you were drawing a tool, you would draw the holder in blue and the insert in yellow, and you'd put them on cut, no cuts, and all that kind of fun stuff. This does it for you. It actually throws the, the holder boundary in blue and the insert boundary in yellow, just like you, you've been doing in Mastercam for forever. All right. So the next stop is the uh, mounting position. Um, it's a vertical tool. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I can mount it horizontal if I want to. It's simply a matter of just clicking away. I can put it in upper. I can reverse it. Is it a in, a in a top turret, a bottom turret? Lots of options to it. So we'll leave this in a top turret. Is it going to be at an angle? You know, default spindle. Which spindle? Which direction is the spindle going to go? All all kinds of stuff I can determine right here that are you know, saved as part of the tool data. And the next order of business is to go ahead and set the compensation point. So we're going to go ahead and figure out, and I need to know am I cutting or plunging? I think I see, I think I'm quadrant one. Yeah, because I'm plunging and cutting. So that looks right. So now I just need to set the point. And I think I'm going to go ahead and set it as a corner. And there's a couple different methods for setting the points. Um, we'll try the uh, three-point method. So I'll select a, a point here, a point there, and a point there. And we'll see what that did. Yeah. So basically, I'm just setting, uh, picking three points of an arc to get that to compensate correctly. So and if you look, it's actually added a little red arrow. So we're cutting, we're plunging, we're compensated, the tool's loaded. Um, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and just do what they call a scan geometry. Make sure that it picks up all the dimensions on this guy. Side clearance height, end clearance width, everything I've done so far. We'll go ahead and green check. It does a quick scan. And then finally I can go ahead and select, you know, what what the material is, uh, default feed rates, um, you know, basic parameters, you know, over, you know, um, step over. Does this have coolant on it? Um, you know, all all kinds of stuff, and I can go into the bottom, you know, any custom options. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and green check it, and then I'll actually create the tool. And there we can see our tool here. And what's nice is if I did anything with it that I didn't like, uh, when I double click on it, I'm actually brought back to that interface. So anything I messed up or, or had oriented incorrectly, I can go ahead and, and just get right back to it just by double clicking on the tool. So what this is going to look like is if I come in here and write a simple rough program which we shall do. So simple rough. I'm going to pick my, my new tool, which is in here somewhere. There it is. You know, I can set out everything I need to. You know, tool number offset, it grabbed all of that. Station number. You know, anything that comes in with that tool, it's in the proper planes. I can go into my rough parameters. You know, I can start deciding what I want to do. Plunge, lead in, lead out. 
entry amounts, just traditional stuff. So we'll just go ahead and just right click to generate a, a quick toolpath. And what you're seeing now is when I go to backplot, uh, instead of sort of a goofy, uh, you know, red and yellow thing that was kind of hard to check for clearances, I've got a, a complete 3D model of that tool, which is very nice. Um, also works in Verify. So if I quickly fight, launch Verify, and I apologize for not having that set up quite right, you can see I've got a, you know, a proper representation of the tool. Um, the uh, collision checks work off the solid model. It is uh, it is pretty pretty handy. Uh, so just to walk through that again, you know, in the tool manager the lathe tool manager right click create 3d tools um, name station numbers pull in inserts pull in holders add step files align them determine it all that stuff uh, and then finally green check and you get yourself a new tool all right well thank you for uh watching uh, again my name is david uh, it's mlc cad systems and this is just one of the cool new things in uh, mastercam 2019 Thank you very much.